please go subscribe to the Rumble channel for Franchise Sports TV under the name FSTV22. Now, I'm using that Rumble channel for any purposes of me getting kicked off YouTube and also for more of my spicier joints. It's free as well. I have the freedom to say whatever I want to say as well. So go subscribe to FSTV22. That is Franchise Sports TV 22 on Rumble. What's up, YouTube? Franchise Sports TV back again with another video. And before I begin, like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I got a Rumble channel as well, as you've seen in the intro. I also got a Cash App too. You can donate to the Cash App. It don't have to be anything expensive. But donate to the Cash App. I'll link the link. Hopefully I can remember to link the link down below. Alright, so. Players coach, right? I always wondered what happened to the players coach. At least in the WNBA. Did I just say WNBA? NBA. I don't know why I said the WNBA. In the NBA. Um, players coaches has been around for most sports for a long time now. But in the NBA, this is the reason why you don't see it anymore. So, I had to find the research. I had to do a little research. Well, in the definition to start off, player coach is a player who may be the head coach, the assistant coach, and they can make changes on the squad and also play on the team. That's the definition for it. But in the NBA, examples were the main two examples. Most, well, diehard NBA fans might remember, remember a lot of them, but... Some might remember Bill Russell, Lenny Wilkins. We know Bill Russell was a players coach for the Celtics from uh, 1966 to 1969. Uh, the Celtics won two championships during that time when he was the players coach. Uh, Lenny Wilkins, who did it for the Seattle Supersonics from 1979 to 1972. And then he did it in his last year in the NBA on the Portland Trailblazers in the 74-75 season. Um, so the reason why the NBA did this, because at first teams did this because they wanted to save money as leagues didn't have the wealth. They didn't have like they do now. Um, if you know, the NBA was down sloping towards the end of the seventies. Um, I wouldn't say it was coming irrelevant, but it wasn't looking good for it. It wasn't looking good before the uh, arrival of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, which kind of revived the NBA and turned it into what you guys see now. Um, it wasn't good financially. But by the 1980s, it became less and less, and probably by the 90s, less and less of a thing. Um, I know the Bucks had this situation with Mike Dunleavy Sr., who actually came out of retirement in 1988 to, uh, was he assistant coach? I think he was assistant coach. I think he was the assistant coach for the Milwaukee Bucks during that time from 1988 to 1990, mainly because, um, the Bucks were around that time was decimated with injuries and they kind of needed him to step in and pick it up for him during that time. I think the Bucks were still a playoff contender during that time as well. Now, the reason why you don't see players coaches anymore is due to the collective bargaining agreement, which prohibits the use of players coaches. This is due to the avoid the circumventing of the league salary as coaches salaries are not, I think it was not under the cap or something like that one under the cap i think that's what it was let me see record I'm trying to do this all uh, memorization yeah i kind of i memorized some of this but let me see right quick there was an exact reason why right quick let me look this up yep that's what it was it was in order to avoid circumventing the league salary cap as coaching salaries are not counted under the cap so therefore if a player is to serve as a coach he will have to receive commission from his contract as a player and then the player then is not technically an official coach of the team, but instead simply a coach in name. So that's what that was. Um, 
I think there's some players that fell into that. What that meant by them. One was Dade Cowens for the Boston Celtics. He served as head coach. He's the last player to serve as head coach for the Boston Celtics during the 1978-1979 season. And then another one was Tree Rollins was an official assistant coach for the Orlando Magic during the 94-95 season. I think he was the last player to serve as the official head coach. I think Kyle was the last person to serve as a head coach. And I do remember, uh, I remember they used to say this back in the early 2000s when A.B. Johnson was in the league before he was out, that they was trying to groom him and have him do a little bit of coaching uh, with him. I forgot what team was he on. I want to say it was Dallas or Spurs. I forgot which team it was. Let me look it up right quick. Um, Let's see here. It was like in his last few years, A.V. Johnson, they did that for him. It might have been when he was on the Mavericks of Golden State. He could have been on the Mavericks because he eventually became a, uh assistant for the Dallas Mavericks and eventually head coach for the Dallas Mavericks, taking them to a finals. Reason why my voice got up like that, because I truly believe that night 2006 finals was a sham. 22 freaking free throws by one player in Dwayne Wade. But anyways, he led him to uh, NBA finals with Dirk in the 05-06 season. And then he went on to go coach Brooklyn for two seasons. And then he went on to go to the college round, coach at Alabama. He is not from Alabama. He's from Louisiana. Is he from Louisiana? Yeah, he's from Louisiana. But anyways, uh, he did win coach of the year and, and became an all-star head coach. But anyways, back to what I was talking about before, the player head coach with him. Um, but there is a long list of players, a very long list of players that have done this, was the player's coach outside of, you know, Bill Russell and, Lenny uh, Wilkins. Uh, I'm going to look down this list right quick because um, I ain't want to write all this down. So Dave the Butcher was one of them. He coached for the Detroit Pistons from 1964 to 1967. He's another one of them. Um, let's see here. Bob Cousy did it in his last season in the NBA. Um... He did it, not did he didn't do it for the Boston Celtics. He did it for the Cincinnati Royals. Dolph Shays did it for a season with the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh I mentioned Dave Collins already. I'm just naming some of the more notable ones. Dick McGuire did it 1959, 1960 season with the Detroit Pistons. Let's see here. Red Holzman did it for the Milwaukee Hawks, 1954. Slater Martin did it a couple years later for the St. Louis Hawks. Bob Pettit did it in 1962 for a couple of games. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm just naming the more the Hall of Famers. This is other players that have done it, but yeah, most of these are dated back to the 50s all the way up until these are head coaches. Matter of fact, head coaches, not assistant coaches. Yeah, this is going all the way back to at least 1979. I don't think they count as coaches on this list. But, um, yeah, they don't do it anymore. Due to the bargain agreement, of course. But, yeah, that's a little history for y'all. Why there's no more players coaches anymore. Let me see the records of uh, Bill Russell right quick during his time. But. I'm looking at Lenny Wilkins' record from 1969 to 1975 when he was player coach for both the Seattle Sonics and Portland Trailblazers. As a player's coach, he coached in 328 games, won 159, lost 169. He got an all-star two years with Seattle during it, and then he got all-star game MVP as well. Um, Bill Russell... His record is a little bit better, of course. They had a stacked team. In 245 games, Bill Russell won 162 and lost 83. Uh, Bill Russell was named to all NBA team in 68-69, all defensive team 1969, all-star 1967, 1968, 1969. I mentioned 
He did get two rings with that team. Uh, he's not the only person who won a ring as a player's coach. Um, Dave the Butcher got an all-star. Both years he was um, the coach. But he only won 79 games, 143. Buddy Jeanette, I think that's open and pronounced it. Buddy Jeanette, Baltimore Bullets from 1947 to 1950, got a ring. In 1948. And there's no other one. So there's only two people who done it. Bill Russell and Buddy Jeanette. So. He's all of them are Hall of Famers. Uh, Ed McCauley got an all-star. He was named all-star head coach for the St. Louis Hawks in 1958-1959. In 62 games he went 43-19. and 19. Um, he's a Hall of Famer. Is that a Hall of Famer? Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer as a player, though. So, yeah, that's just a little history I wanted to share with some people. I know some older heads probably already know some of that. Some of the younger people don't know. Probably you know that players back then can be head coaches, assistant coaches. They didn't know that. So, um, with all that being said, tell me what you guys think.